quick, quick content warning. I am gonna uh, look at uh, a an archive on the Internet Archive randomly. There's like a 0.0000001% chance it's something awful, but um, you know. Uh, so just quickly, restorative land. Oh, actually, before we get into that, um, Dean asked me to do a prayer. You know, it's the start of our weekend conference and everything, and I thought it'd be nice to have a nice prayer before we before we started off here. So, um, oh yeah, I can't see it on my screen if it's a value frame. Hold on. Let's see the horses prayer. <laughs> Probably can't read this. I switched to a white theme, but to thee, my master, I offer my prayer. Feed me, water, and care for me. And when the day's work is done, provide me with shelter, a clean, dry bed, and a stall wide enough for me to lie down in comfort. Always be kind to me. Your voice often means as much to me as the rain's. Pet me sometimes, that I may serve you the more gladly and learn to love you. Do not jerk the reins, and do not whip me when going uphill. Never strike, beat, or kick me when I do not understand what you want, but give me a chance to understand you. Watch me, and if I fail to do your bidding, if I see something is not wrong with my harness or feet, do not check me so that I cannot have free use of my head. If you insist that I wear blinkers so that I cannot see behind me as it was intended I should, that's the end. I actually ran into that while doing... Um, an archive that I discovered recently that no one really knows a lot about. So I'm going to show you guys in a second here. But there's, uh, so yeah, Restorative Land. Restorative Land is kind of a project that started years ago to uh, sort of take archived, shut down, abandoned web ruins and try to restore them in such a way that it's interesting to actually look at them and like surf them and, you know, be entertained by them, right? Um, and it's not really like an archive because archives are sort of rigidly trying to just make a full copy of everything. And like, it's not really like a, I don't know, a museum or what. It's like, because they have like rigid bureaucratic rules about like what art is and stuff. I, I'm just trying to kind of be in the middle and just do whatever I want and make something that's like interesting to people that like do web surfing and stuff and, you know, goofing off on the web at 11 p.m. or whatever, you know. Um, because the thing is, we actually have, you know, the thing about the 90s web that's kind of fun is we actually have a copy of most of it. Like, the Internet Archive basically backed up the entire web in the 90s. There wasn't really a lot of uh, walled gardens and stuff back then. Uh, so it was basically just static HTML. It's, you know, it doesn't require dynamic backends to render. It's not behind paywalls. You don't have to log in. There's not, like, anti-scraping stuff. Um, and what's kind of fun about that, too, is that, you know, because that's true and because most of the stuff we're doing now is going to be like deleted and destroyed in the future uh that kind of means that all the dancing baby animated gifs and Celine Dion midi files and you know they are going to be called the golden age of the web by historians and all the stuff that we're doing right the crap we're doing with it right now is going to be called the dark ages because that's like basically like part of the reason why the golden ages were the golden ages is because they use papyrus scrolls and they last a long time and so people can still read them right versus like they switch to a type of paper that like destroyed more easily and so like any writing that was done or whatever just kind of partially got destroyed just because of that or whatever you know but to all future historians, uh, if we don't get nuked by Google's terrible a Gemini AI or whatever, um, you're not missing anything. The internet right now sucks, so <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's like we have those backups, but they're just they're kind of hard to look at and do stuff with. Like they're just you know, it's you can load a single. You probably all host of years use the Internet Archive before, right? Like I've, yeah, I know, right? It's like pretty indispensable. But like you know, the way you a lot of people use it is just kind of like feed an old URL into it. They hit a 404 page and they're like. Oh, I wonder if this is in the archive, right? And you get like a single URL or whatever. But it's not actually easy to just like look through all of it, right? To just do quickly kind of scan thousands of pages or d things stored on the Internet Archive and just kind of look at what it actually is, you know, like what's there. You know, if you're trying to surf and explore content, it's different than like trying to find a specific 404 page that you are trying to like see, even though it like went away or whatever. And uh, that's kind of what I've been trying to do with Restorative Land, you know, like Internet Archive. Again, they've done an amazing job of backing this stuff up, but it's like, how do we actually do anything with that, you know? Like, it's kind of mothballed. It's kind of in giant, weird archives that uh, need to kind of have some value out on some of this data in order to actually have it be useful and accessible. So, uh, show of hands, who remembers GeoCities here? <laughs> yeah. Um, which of you actually had a site on GeoCities? <laughs> okay. Several. 
getting down. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, of the remaining, who is willing to share in, uh, their web page with us so we can actually look at it here? Okay. Who's got a piece of paper? Oh, wait, I've got a piece of paper, but who's got who's got a pen? Because I don't have a pen yet. Sweet. Ah, oh, where'd it go? Well, we'll, we'll look at. I don't want to like make the thing start screaming at me. So, <laughs> you know how it is with microphones, right? You walk away and it goes. Psh! But um, yeah, if you write it down, uh, I can try to look it up here at the end, and we can see if we can get it to work. And uh, oh, also, yeah, one more thing: you get a kombucha because of you're giving, you're going to throw away your life in this embarrassing web page you're about to show us. So <laughs> feel free to have one. Um, okay, so. The rest of you, that like, for people here that don't know what GeoSays was, first of all, I have no idea how you ended up at TorCamp, but <laughs> yeah, basically, back in the 90s, way before famous Roman Emperor Mark Zuckerberg made Facebook, uh, people would ruin, oh, thank you. Oh, man, this guy's got it down. Oh, it's in Heartland, too. This is going to be really messed up. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, GeoSays was the, kind of the way people networked, right? Like they, they make, it was the biggest platform in the world for doing that, more or less, with a few million sites, which at the time was enough to convince a lot of investors to put a crazy amount of money into it. It was kind of like the NVIDIA of its time or whatever, you know, like this just, you know, everyone's just like, oh, this is the future and everything or whatever. And, you know, went public during dot-com, boom, was acquired by Yahoo for, I had to look it up again, $3.57 billion in stock, which is a lot. <laughs> But I guess because it was stock, it was other people's money, so that's kind of a thought. It started, and then of course it started dying down and eventually shut down in 2009. But there was a big archive of it that the archive team did, which are like loosely affiliated with the Internet Archive. But that's a uh, text files, a uh, Scott guy. I don't remember his last name, but yeah, Jason Scott. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, a lot of other great people came in and like worked on that archive and helped restore it and stuff. And then somehow that all got integrated back into what was probably already also at the Internet Archive. And so it's like a pretty comprehensive backup at this point. And um, yeah, it was. It's a really low. It's a, it's a really low hanging fruit for website restoration for a lot of reasons. Uh, first of all, the sites were pretty interesting and creative. And there wasn't really a whole lot of content moderation, and I have like a specul I have a speculative theory for why this is true, because I've actually listened to a lot of podcast or a podcast history uh, on GeoCities where they actually interviewed the CEO uh, who was David David Bonet Dave Bonet who's like now this like billionaire philanthropist in LA, and um, he uh, he's he sort of grew up in Chicagoland and he was like openly gay and like you know I think maybe growing up back then that way like felt kind of marginalized and so he kind of wanted Geo Cities to be like a community that was like really open and a lot of like marginalized communities to kind of like you know uh, you know congeal and stuff and so I think that's like he was very proud of that particular thing and I think that's part of the reason why he was kind of just like you know not trying to get hardcore on content moderation and stuff to kind of make it it's like a safe space for people that like were marginalized and. You know, that's not a safe position for corporations to take then or now, you know. So um, I think that's kind of cool and interesting and also makes the content, like, a lot more interesting, too. Uh, it's also interesting because the sites weren't completely random. They were separated into what were called neighborhoods, um, which were vaguely related topics loosely around, modeled around suburbs, which were sort of the trend of the time. Uh, but also confusingly named after areas of Los Angeles, too. So if you knew absolutely fuck nothing about L.A. like I do, you wouldn't understand that uh, Hollywood is the LGBT space on GeoCities, right? Uh, because that's where it was, in, uh, presumably, in Los Angeles, right? Um, when I first saw the, uh, there's a, <laughs> one of the neighborhoods is called, Rode I, well, I'll just, the way I thought it was, Rodeo Drive? Right, Rodeo Drive. So I assumed it was like for cattle ranchers or something. <laughs> and I was really, yeah, I was really confused when all the sites were pictures of like weird rich people stuff until I learned that it's actually some fancy part of LA where Jeff Bezos and his like Italian turbo girlfriend go to buy $6 million Louis Vuitton cocaine ponies for their gold plated yacht or whatever rich people do. I don't fucking know, man. Look what I'm wearing right now. I don't know anything about rich people. But anyway, uh, the neighborhoods are a pretty good way to sort out the sites a bit because if it's a platform where it's just usernames, there's not really a lot you can do to, you know, how do you separate that content out, right? Like it's it's a, it, 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 it's very hard to do that. And so, you know, 
it just ends up being a giant pile of random sites that you can't really curate that well. So the neighborhood model gives you a pretty decent way to split the sites so they're more browsable. And it's not perfect, right? Like, it, you know, not all of the neighborhood, you know, not everything in Hollywood was LGBT, you know, not everything in um, Heartland Heart was insane, like, like hardcore, like all, like right wing religious crap. So, or maybe it is. I don't know. Let's find out. Um, the early GeoSays archives were kind of, I mean, you know, kudos for being first, but they were kind of blah. They essentially just took a big static dump of all the sites and uh, just dropped them in. So you click on Heartland and you get uh, the numbers here, right? Like, and these were kind of the addresses of GeoCities neighborhoods, essentially. Again, the, the suburban housing model or whatever. Um, but, you know, it's kind of just like Russian roulette, whether you're going to see something interesting or an under construction page or something really gross and indecent. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that was like a uh, really obvious thing to do is just kind of build a visual preview of the sites so you could actually gauge interest, right? Like, so can you see this okay? Okay, yeah. Uh, initially started trying to get the screenshots with a really, I got, I went way over the deep end right away. I'm like, okay, I'm going to make a Windows 98 virtual machine. Like I, I found this like ancient version of Ruby that plugs into this like ancient version of like ODB or some kind of programming interface for Windows that like a macro interface. And so I took screenshots using Internet Explorer 5 and, you know, would spit them out and it was like, oh man, cool. But like. Honestly, the problem is that it doesn't work very well because uh, all of these sites were kind of incompatible. The, the cross compatibility of these sites was like non-existent. So like the, some of the sites were great on Netscape Navigator and some of them would work great on Internet Explorer and they wouldn't work at all in some of the other stuff. And some of them only require Internet Explorer 6. And you know, so, so it, it turns out that actually um, it's easier to just uh, use a modern browser because for the most part, it, the HTML underneath all this stuff it, it, most of it is just still HTML, so like table layouts and all this stuff, right? It's pretty simple. And so um, using just like headless Chrome, honestly, is just like the best way to do screenshots of this stuff. Uh, just set the resolution so that it's smaller because obviously people didn't have huge 4K monitors or whatever back then. But um, you'd be surprised at how much that just gets you there, you know, <laughs> without having to get too crazy. Um, Another problem you run into is stuff like this, where it's like, uh, you know, people created a site. It's a 200 site, you know, it returns 200 in the Internet Archive because it was a valid site, but it was like an under construction. I'm still building my site. And these are obviously kind of useless, right? Like, you don't want to look at this, right? So a big part of making these archives is scrubbing out a lot of stuff, right? Like a lot of pages that are like, you know, this, where it's just like the default page or whatever. And, you know, most people didn't, they created an account and didn't make a site, you know? Like, so you got to get that stuff out. Um, this was a really clever thing I came up with. Well, I think it's clever. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this, it might be hard to see because it's really dark here, but like uh, basically I made a, a I, I call it the, the, the boring website detector. And basically what it is is it just sees how white the web page is. <laughs> and um, I won't add any other details. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the, the whiter the page is, because the, the white was the default background. So a lot of times it's just an HTML and it's just like the word fart. You know, and it's like, okay, well, that's dumb too. I don't want to look at that. So, I, you know, the, this just checks to see how many white pixels it finds or whatever. And then if it's like less than a certain arbitrary score, it just removes them from the listing. So, um, let's see here. Oh, yeah. So, this is the archive I built. Uh, it's up right now, actually. You can just go to restorativeland.org. And again, I don't have this on my preview screen. So, it's, oh, shit, I broke it. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> uh, did it really go away? Oh, my God, it did. All right, hold on. i got to restart everything. <laughs> yeah, so I I, um, I won't try to browse it right now just because, like, it's kind of hard to do because it's i got to do it on the other screen. But um, basically, it's, um, yeah, it's like a big archive. You can kind of browse it and look at all the pages. And it's got just, like, all the neighborhoods and stuff are there. Um, all right, bringing it over. Boom. See the I can't even see the mouse. It's so dark. Oh my god! Hold on. I know. I see it. I see it. I'm trying to get to this one right here. Come on. It's like all being slow and weird too. Come on. Uh, why is it not working? I don't even know. 
just going to do that. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's see. We were at the archive. Yeah. All right. So, anyway, while that was happening, oh, I got to hold on. <laughs> Okay, so while that was happening, switching gears a little bit, while I was working on the GSA's archive, uh, MySpace, you guys remember, okay, hands up, who remembers MySpace? So um, they were used for a lot of bands, so like there, there was kind of like, the, I don't know what the order of operations was, but like mp3.com was like one of the big first, like, oh, you can upload stuff, music for your band or whatever things, and then some rich executives decided to delete all of that and make it a paid music service. And so they deleted everyone's MP3 files and stuff. And again, just like a whole musical history of the web is lost. I don't think there's a backup of that. I think it was like before the you know, archive or something. I don't know. It's just, I don't, I'm not aware of an mp3.com archive. So MySpace kind of became the next thing. It was like MySpace bands or whatever. People just upload their indie bands and stuff. And uh, MySpace, uh, in a migration, in a mysterious migration in 2018, uh, mysteriously deleted all of the music on MySpace while trying to do a migration of some kind. They lost all of that information. At least that's what they say it was a database migration. I mean, maybe it was intentional. I don't know. But whoops, there was another shitload of internet history. Cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, the uh, actually, uh, there was a, uh, yeah, and it was kind of an insult to injury event because like, you know, there was mp3.com and there was MySpace and like, what's next, SoundCloud, right? Like, just kind of all waiting for SoundCloud to blow up because it just keeps happening over and over and over again. But anyway, uh, some, t uh, let's see here, the comments are screwed up. So, the, yeah, so basically someone, uh, someone downloaded like a, ter I don't know, it was like a half a terabyte or something of like the MySpace files and um, they uploaded them to uh, uh, Internet Archive. And again, I think this is part of the, the archive team or whatever. And uh, their description of this was um, a wide, a wide-ranging collection of 490,000 MP3 files from MySpace.com is accomplished using unknown means by an anonymous academic study conducted between 2008 and 2010. There is no other information about the origin of this collection at this time. Well, it turns out I'm not responsible for the collection. <laughs> But I actually, around 2009, uh, I did a database scrape of MySpace, and I reverse engineered how they did the encryption to actually do the downloads for the files. So I actually know how they did it. <laughs> so I'll, I'll show you. Um, uh, the, the first one's just kind of, this is just like an obvious, uh, it's like a just a MySpace music. It's one of those like you know search pages, and it just paginates, so you can just like scrape all the data off of it in the you know tables or whatever, and then just go to the next page and just do that till it starts crashing. Your script starts cra stops starts crashing, and then you've got the whole database basically. I love pagination. I wish we went back to that. I actually really like pagination. But um, so this is just. I mean, this is just like you know scraping a web page. You know, it's using a apricot for Ruby, which if you're a Ruby person, that was like what we used to use back in the day, but we use something else now, Nokogiri. But um this is the this is the meat right here. This is the uh this is the thing that uh this is the script I wrote that actually uh so but what happened is there was like a shockwave file, uh like a sh shockwave flash player for MP3, because back then browsers couldn't play music. And so it would sort of, there was a CDN and it would like send a question token, and then you'd have to send an answer response, and then it would let you download the MP3 file. And it was kind of buried in the flash how it was doing that or whatever. Well, it's flash, right? So I just decompiled it, because you can. <laughs> and I just looked at the code and I just made like a Ruby version of it. And so basically, um, yeah, it gets like the, question or whatever right here does it show the highlighting no it doesn't of course it doesn't um but the yeah i think the kind of i don't know it's just doing a bunch of random stupid cryptography that sucks but like the kind of interesting thing is just that you see that uh q what is it q oh you don't see it at all oh that's right sorry um there's let me go over here uh, i broke it again didn't i <laughs> damn it okay sorry i need like I need like night vision during the day or something. I just can't see that screen. All right, hold on. <laughs> Go back to this. Uh, okay. S okay, hold on. All right. We'll, we'll we'll try to minimize what we're doing over there. This doesn't work very well. Uh, okay. 
Um, so basically, sorry, there's just this key that at the ultimately you run into this key right here that's the actual key that's doing the like the question answer thing. And uh, I had to actually ask ChatGPT about it because I'm not an OPSEC guy at all, OPSEC guy at all. But it's basically just uh, the start of the control. Con the start of the header control character uh, 32 times. That was the that was the secret password to uh, break MySpace's CDN. And I don't know, maybe that's a good because like I don't know if I don't know if like those like password guessers even like try to do this character or not. You know, because it's just kind of weird. But like that was what they used as their encryption key. Like, which is you know. But yeah, so presumably whoever dumped the archive out probably just did the same thing, right? They just like de de decompiled it. They looked at the terrible, like the four lines of code you needed to like break their encryption or whatever. And you know, again, it's like just remember at the end of the day, you know, if you're doing archive work, if you can see or hear something, you can probably make a copy of it, even if there's some garbage cryptography trying to stop you. And we might need to start doing more of that actually, because that's what everyone uses now for platforms, right? But just be aware when you're doing this is that the point of encryption of viewable content isn't really to prevent people from copying it because it doesn't, right? It's to make it illegal to copy it so they can throw smart people in cages for doing backups and making Linux plugins and stuff, you know? Like that's kind of the shitty, gray, ugly gray area thing about the DMCA that still kind of exists. So if you're poking around with this stuff, just keep that in mind, you know? Like it's not, it's gonna be dangerous, but Anyway, I took that content and I made uh, a, a music player that's sort of like a Pandora-like music player for the Dragonheart content. Uh, also, my art, my my dump of that information also had all of the genres, the popularity of the band and the songs, and the location of the bands. And I plugged that back into the metadata that was provided by their dump. And that's a lot more interesting, right? Because then you can like sort it out or whatever. And uh, you can listen to this on again on Restorative Land. Uh, some of the music is actually pretty good you know like there's some pretty good stuff out there some of it sounds like i don't know moby ate 10 pounds of drone delivered vegan tacos and <laughs> farted into a microphone for five minutes and decided to classify that as christian rap for some reason <laughs> but you know i don't know there's probably some really interesting ways to aggregate um to aggregate the to figure out what's good and what's bad in here. I mean, I just think this because like Spotify has become really good at algorithm suggesting content. And so like, I feel like you know, the ML stuff's getting to the point where it actually can like tell if music's good or bad. I don't know, but uh, I'm just letting that be for now. I'm not doing any more work on that. I'm done with it. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's say you wanna find something to do this with, right? Like, how do you do that? Um, well, it's just honestly, just by just, surfing and just goofing off you know like um geocities is sort of the obvious low-hanging fruit but there's a ton of other web hosting platforms that have existed and that were sort of like lesser known or whatever um digging around the internet archive with old web proxies looking at old magazines from the 90s that were like computer or web themed um these are pretty good ways to find platforms and old archives of content you know you can ask chat gpt i mean just you know just get creative you know there's all kinds of stuff you can look around for and uh, you know, I've, I haven't like put together an exhaustive list of stuff I want to restore or anything. Uh, but one of the things I actually found uh, recently, and I'm going to show it to you. And like, again, no one looks at this stuff. This is like fresh stuff, right? Um, I found an interesting cache of websites just by looking at an old copy of Netscape Navigator. I mean, I don't know, maybe I was over at Unix haters and I just like loaded it up and it loads uh, home.netscape.com, which was like sort of their web portal. Uh, and so like I kind of was playing around with that and this is gonna suck because I got to come back here now But at least it's a white page. Hold on. <laughs> oh, where's my mouse? Oh, there it is. I This is impossible So yeah, oh, yeah, this is oldweb.net. I think is what it's called and it's really helpful Okay Okay, hold on home dot net. So this is really nice for just kind of surfing around looking for stuff, you know and uh, okay, it's gotta be really ginger here, so don't break it again. All right, let's check it out. Two thousand. Let's do nineteen ninety nine. All right. And let's click this. So it's gonna load this now and check it out. There is a. Did it work? Oh yeah, it did. Okay, hold on. I gotta find the pages now. <laughs> Where is it? Oh yeah. So see this one, home pages. Okay, hold on. Hold on. We gotta try to get there. I know. Let me know. 
There we go. All right. So it uh, turns out that Netscape tried to, you know, they they you know they were trying to make money, right? Like they're trying to make money in any possible way. And so they were like, wait, let's rip off GeoCities. So they tried to do this. And, oh, where's the mouse? <laughs> I can't see it. Headline news. It's changing. It's changing. Oh, I see. I see it. I see. It. I see. It. I see it. I see it. Okay. Let's go to. Let's go to. What do you? Which topic you guys want? Science. Science. Okay. Terrible answer. Terrible answer. <laughs> you don't want to go to that. You're gonna look at. It's gonna be houses in Seattle for like fifty thousand dollars. You don't want to look at that. All right. We'll do. Alternative science. Yes. So they had their own kind of like little uh, cryptozoology. <laughs> All right, here, hold on. All right, so song link, lyrics and miscellany stuff. Uh, mi some of me song links lyrics lyrics I care about what of no spell checks. <laughs> oh, sh I'm sorry, I forgot. The Nashugal Wild Turkey Federation is dedicated to conserving wild turkeys so they can kill them. <laughs> That's like kind of the best one I've found on this archive so far, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, so this is interesting, right? Like, there's a lot of. Incredibly informative information. This is like the Library of Alexandria that burned down, except we've restored it here, and now you can learn them. There's probably lost knowledge, eternal lost knowledge in here, right? That, like no one's even realized yet. And they solved like maybe they got a grand unified theory on this page. I don't know, but yeah, it's this whole idea of like. So this is. I mean, this is. I mean, right? This would be kind of fun to res try to restore this, right? You. And again, like no project is the same, right? If I try to take the same stuff I did to GeoCities and apply it to this thing, it's not going to be the same. It's going to have different problems that need to get solved. It's going to have different ways of curating the information. Honestly, that directory thing is a pretty funny way to just sort out the sites, right? It's kind of like neighborhoods almost, right? And so you could almost just like replicate that whole screen or whatever and that content and do it that way. Um, and I mean, you could, you know, it doesn't have to be super fancy. You don't have to download all the files. And, you know, you could just like set up an interface for what's at the Internet Archive, you know, like, and then you don't even have to download anything and do any processing because, like, they just kind of do it themselves or whatever, right? Like, you could just make like a little thing that's in, like a little shim that's like between this browsing interface and like uh, your thing you want to do. And it could be that simple, right? Like, it's all about being good, not about being talented. No, it's just, we don't have any talent, and that's why I do this stuff. All right, so um, let's see. I have to try to figure out how to change the... Okay, yeah. But if you do want to download stuff from the Inner Archive, um, just a quick crash course here, so that like, you're a little familiar with the words you have to Google for. Um, CDX server is like the really big one, uh, because this is the... Essentially, the CDX server is this giant database that they have somewhere at the Inner Archive that has a list of every single file they've ever backed up. Um, it has like times, you know, it has like screen, you know, time, you know, you know how it is. There's like different years and different time, time, uh, time stamps and stuff like that. Um, but this is the thing you really want to familiarize yourself with if you're going to be working in Internet Archive content because uh, this is sort of the root thing that like gives you the information, on, like tells you what you need to download to actually get a full copy of an archive. Um, and uh, it's got a it's got some kind of weird parameters in it, and it's a little it takes a little finicky. You know, it takes a while to get used to it. But like um, with this, it's just a search index, a curl query, and you know, URL is just like the platform, and then uh, match type is a host, which is like a hosting platform. Uh, you try to filter out 200 status because 200 is like a successful page. If it's a 404 or a 302 or something like that, it's a redirect or it's broken. And so, like you know, eventually these sites again, these sites all died literally. So you don't want the last thing that it's ever found on it because it's probably a dead link, right? Um, and then stuff like uh, I think collapse equals URL key. I think that makes it so it just shows you the last successful one instead of just giving you like 50 versions of each one or whatever. And it spits out in this sort of like, it's called the CDX format, but it's kind of just like a, co a space separated uh, list. It's like kind of like a CSV, I guess. It's more or less the same. Uh, and you can kind of then use that to do down download lists and write a script that downloads all the files. 
Um, another nice trick, uh, if you have any link from the Internet Archive and you want to just get the raw version of it because they do actually fix the links so that images load and stuff, uh, you just add, after the end of the timestamp, it's kind of weird, you add ID underscore to the end of the timestamp. And for whatever reason, that's the format for getting raw output from the Internet Archive. Again, it was just some hack someone did like 30 years ago, and it's just what everyone does still, <laughs> you know? Um, what stuff to work on, right? Like downloading it, bringing it locally, the Internet Archive is a little slow, so it's kind of hard to surf it sometimes. Uh, uh, you know, fixing MIDI playback. So actually, on on the arch on the GeoSays archive, I actually got the MIDIs to play again <laughs> on the sites because like browsers don't support that anymore. Uh, but I was hanging out down in the Bay at the time uh, with Faraz, who's a really really hardcore like JavaScript security guy. You probably a lot of people probably know Faraz. He's amazing. And uh, he's just kind of, a, he's got a, he just loves the old web too. And so he actually, because he, you know, my whole thing was I was just going to make a MIDI version of each of the MIDI files, just to, like translate them to MP3 file, or sorry, yeah, MIDI, translate the MIDI to MP3 files, because <laughs> I'm dumb and that's like easy to do. He's just like, oh no, we can put a MIDI synthesizer in JavaScript. I'm like, what the fuck? What? <laughs> But it's, it's, it's for us, man. Like, he can do stuff like that. So he made, like, a Wasm MIDI synthesizer. So we actually, like, ported MIDI playing back into the browser so that we could just actually play synthesized music, which is insane. But you don't have to be that fancy. You don't always get access to for us, you know? Like, you can do it the, d the dumb and dirty way, too. It's fine. No one's going to judge you. Um, Replacing the URLs, you know, some of them are links to, some of them are absolute URLs, some of them are relative URLs, some of them link to other servers that don't exist anymore, uh, you know, and fixing those links so that they work, you know, so that it loads the images locally, and if it's like a third-party link, maybe you change the link to go to the Internet Archive somehow, so it can it doesn't just totally die. Um, you make a gallery, screenshots, visually accessible, you know, just like that kind of page I showed you. Um, just trying to figure out how to make it fun to look at it, you know. Um, search functionality would be cool. It's actually weirdly hard to do search functionality now uh, because uh, Google is so dominates the search space now that like no one even just makes like very easy and accessible web page search engines anymore. Like you used to be able to just get stuff back in the day, like in the Apache Weblizer day, where you could just like it would just spider your page and give you a bunch of crappy search results or whatever and you can just use google for this obviously but like it's nice to have a local one be able to show the screenshots you know just be really specialized but unfortunately it's like no one even makes tools for that anymore so like you got to just either pull something off the shelf from the 90s or just like i, I don't know i i'm still trying to figure out search on the, for this stuff honestly like i haven't really gotten there yet um or just some kind of randomizer, you know, just like the Pandora style thing where it just like shows a random website, you know, that can be really fun too. But um, let's see, some, let's see, what is this, what is, oh yeah, yeah, so this is one of the pages randomly from the netscape.com archive. Uh, just so I can show you some of the issues you're gonna run into when you see this as a raw dump. So first one is that there's a uh, fave icon up here that's uh, going to sitestatic.netscape.com, right? That's that link doesn't work anymore. So like, this is probably something that Netscape auto injected into every page on there. So you know you might want to change that or put something there. Um, there's something called the the recirculation bar. Um, I'll, instead of trying to scroll over there, I'll just <laughs> describe it. Um, by the way, it's table layouts. You know, again, works in all browsers, right? Like you don't really. The design still works on these pages. They, they're they're kind of weird because they're bigger than they're supposed to be, but they all kind of work, you know? And so that's pretty sweet. Like, you don't have to actually do a lot to make them, change them so that they are, you can look at them still. Um, there is also at the bottom of this file, there's like a weird turd that like NeoCities injected, or sorry, Nets, NeoCities. Freudian slip. I don't know what that was. I, 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 NeoCities doesn't inject any HTML, by the way. <laughs> we don't, and we never will. Like, that was like kind of a golden rule, because, you know, part of the reason why is because I hate this shit. I hate digging the crap out of this. But it's basically, it's this thing called the Hidometer, and it's like a Netscape CGI file, and it's like injected in every page. So you see a lot of stuff like that where it's like, it doesn't necessarily hurt anything, but you can scrape that out when you're doing regex and stuff. You know, it's a lot of just search and replace and all that. and. Again, finding the under construction pages, you know, you don't, it's not useful information. 
But no, Neostasis does not inject HTML. I can. I have the capability to do that. But I don't. Okay, so a couple random mistakes, uh, th points of advice. If you ever try to like make your own sort of archive like this, um, the things that are not super obvious unless you actually do it. Uh, one of them is uh, kind of to no add a no index to the robots.txt file, uh, not because I'm paranoid about machine learning, uh, because um, what happens is is that your site gets more CEO than or SEO, SEO like search engine optimization. It gets better rankings than like someone's personal web page, but it's their web page from like 40 years ago where they're talking about tool and like reviewing 40 ounces or whatever. And they get really pissed off at you because they're like, this is like a terrible, like this is like when I was 16. Like I, I have a job now. I have like, a ch I have children. Please take this down. And and they, and they and of course the GeoCities one in particular, there's like every time someone makes a new archive, they're just like, oh, not again. I have to do. So I actually, I got a lot of complaints. I ended up just honestly just putting a no index on it. And obviously it's not great for your search results. I think the actual, like the index page, like the directory listing is not no indexed, but like the actual sites are. I'm really trying to get people to come that are intentionally trying to come to look at the GSA's archive, not people that are like accidentally stumbling onto like their page from when they were 14 and really into tool or whatever, you know, like, and so um, I think that's, you know, better than having more SEO, right? Like, and also I did stop getting email complaints after I did that, so that's that's nice too. I don't have, I'm not that invested in this, you know? <laughs> um, let's see, another thing I have is if you are doing like conversions, like if you're fixing links, if you're like adding MIDI injectors, uh, consider doing it as a dynamic conversion via a web application than writing a script that does that conversion, at least initially, because the thing is, or be able to switch between the two, because when you're doing the changes, you'll you'll go in and you'll find that you screwed something up or that there's like a new thing you need to add, and then all of a sudden you need to change like 50 million pages, right? It's way easier to just do it dynamically on the fly than to like have to rerun that con my, that that task again and recompile the whole thing. I mean, you can do it that way. It just takes forever because like you'll be like, oh, I forgot. Oh man, I got to do that now because that's breaking ten thousand of the sites or whatever. So, ah, <sighs> it's not that hard though. Just to, like kind of wrap up here. It, it's it's not that hard. Um, the these are really low hanging fruit if you want to get into like weird interesting tech projects that like are impressive and like entertain people and are you know fun to talk about uh and are fun to share with you know people always like asking me like what you know i get a lot of people are like oh how do you get into programming you know like but i'm just like do, do something fun you know like don't like the, the whole i mean i don't know maybe the boot camp thing works but like i i would just never I would throw my computer out a window if I ever did something like that. Like, I mean, I, I really need something. I have ADD brain. And I really need to like have. Oh, this is interesting. Like, I have to have something that's like fun to do. And like, so anyone that's like always asking, like, I always tell them to do something dumb and weird like this. You know, like start like an archive project or something. Like, do like a restoration, play around with some old content. Um, and you know, the thing is, it's not expensive to run. I run this out of my basement, by the way, literally. <laughs> um, it's uh, I have Cloudflare in front of it. And uh, it's just like a HTTP server, right? And it doesn't use a lot of transit. So like, I can just do that, right? It, it doesn't cost me a dime. And that's actually really nice to do anyway because the thing about web hosting is if you need like five terabytes of disk space, it actually does become kind of expensive to host it on web hosting providers for some reason. It really shouldn't be. I mean, it's like hard drives are cheap now. Like why is it still expensive? But like, it's true. So this is a pretty good thing to do with a home lab, you know, your, your old laptop even, you know? You can just like plug it in and put an external drive in it, and that's your server, you know, easy. Um, but uh, so let's see. Yeah, if you're interested, if you're, if you're looking for a fun project to work on, just go find a weird old archive of data from the 90s that no one's doing anything with, like the one we just looked at, and screw around with it. Did it? Oh, this was going to be something. <laughs> anyway, I'll just end it here. That's pretty much the end of my talk. Thank you. <laughs> oh, we got to load. Hold on. We got to. No, it's not the end. Hold on. I got to load this guy's talk here. I have a question, too. Please do while I'm loading this. Do yeah, I'll just answer questions. Do you need other people to host backup copies in their basements? Uh, like, what if your basement floods? <laughs> um, 
Well, I've done a lot of flood control on the house. You know, I graded the house on the sides and stuff. And uh, I would do, I would do backups. Yeah. I, yeah, you do backups. You know, put put an external drive upstairs and in your basement. <laughs> that that works. That's a good. T that works really well. Let's see here. I'm loading your site, by the way. Hold on. Heartland. Families, pets, and hometown values. Added November 1995, by the way. That's what that neighborhood is. It's like, you'll, if you go in there, you'll see a lot of, like, uh, like I don't know, dogs, like, kneeling to, in, in front of crosses. And, um, <laughs> and uh, like, pictures of Bill Clinton smoking a cigar with, like, a, you know, X'd out or something like that. You know, it just kind of tends to be the, the vibe over there. Let's see. Is this in... All right, 3452. Uh, it's possible you're not in my archive because actually uh, my archive uses the original. Uh, well, no, I'm, uh, don't worry. I'm going to find it. I've got multiple. <laughs> it's possible my boring website detector. <laughs> oh, I've got, I've, no, I, I've got your site. Hold on. Um... Oh man, that's messed up, dude. <laughs> no, hold on. I got one more thing I gotta look at. I, I found his site, but it's like a directory listing, so I wanna just I know. That's weird. So hold on. The uh GeoCities dot com. Yeah, so I TLDR I, I used the terabyte backup from the archive team and um for the copy of the data. I haven't actually back sort of backported the Internet Archive stuff that's currently in there into it. And so once I get to that point, um, it'll be more interesting. Oh, wow. Okay, hold on. Um, this might be the best we can do here. Welcome to the Pargman page. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. It's um, it's not looking healthy here, but I'll bring it over. So, ah, uh, why did it read? Hold on, no, hold on. Why did it just break here? Hold on. Yeah, it's it's some of the links are broken here. So this is the Internet Archive copy. It's probably the most canonical one available, but I don't know. I guess the which one should I click on? The Carol one? Is that cool? Okay. I love frogs. <laughs> All of those pictures were animated GIFs of my family's heads that I used Snappy to take from VHS tape. Oh, and no way. when I went for my very first job interview after college, three old dudes walked me into this room, and they turned around the monitor, and there was this page. I died. I died. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, uh, sorry, I guess it's, yeah, I mean, I could probably look around and see if I could find the animated pictures, but it's going to take a while. So, um, but thank you for sharing your page with us. That's very funny, actually. That's very cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, we got, I don't know, we got like six minutes. Any questions? Any feedback? Any death threats? Yeah. Are, are there any large scale efforts to back up archive.org? Uh, no, I don't think so. The, uh, so during the recent political zaniness, um, Brewster had the idea of backing up, making a copy of it in Canada at least. <laughs> so it's like, you know, oh, sorry, I'm being filmed. I should probably stand still. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, he was going to make a copy of it in Canada. I don't know if he actually ever did that or not, but like the idea was just kind of like if the U.S. went like even slightly crazier than it usually is, like... Um, that there'd be like a backup in Canada. So uh, I don't know if you ever finished that or what happened with that. But it's actually kind of funny when you go to the Internet Archive. Do you see that picture of the servers or whatever that I had in the first slide or whatever? Oh, and she, oh, this is going to be a good one. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> this is okay. No, this we got a we got a real user here. This is enchanted. This is enchanted forest. This is going to be the good stuff here. Let me. Um, figure out how to, yeah, so, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, TLDR, uh, I, I do, you know, I don't know a ton about, like, the sort of state of, you know, archive, 
Um, we actually, uh, but they are in, in a, this kind of crazy lawsuit right now <laughs> uh, over the open library stuff that happened during COVID. And uh, I don't know, there's definitely a worry that I have in the back of my head that like, you know, holy shit, you know, if, Geo if Internet Archive does go down for some reason, that's uh, obviously not great, you know, because um, this it really is the archive of the web right now. I'm gonna put the mic down for a sec just to type this in. I got it. All right. Uh, <laughs> okay, hold on. I can zoom in here. I'm just going to read it. There it is. Ah. Welcome. Your person number, broken link to CGI thing. To come to this page since September 16th, 1998. Wow, this page is pretty empty. Sucks for you. <laughs> well, Fun, fun, fun. There used to be a cyber cattery here, and if you've come here looking for it, you're a little late. Actually, now it is here. Crystal Sun Virtual Cattery. So there it is. I, I, I guess I probably, yeah, thank you. You can click it. All right, hold on. Let me try to find the mouse again. Oh, there it is. Uh, any other questions? Woo. Awesome. Are there any privacy concerns with having all this archive stuff up for people's old shit? Privacy concerns? Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, I yeah, I mean, you know, I think this was kind of pre. Um, I think this was like the the part of the concern. Which what should my next link be here? All right. Oh, that's cool. Princess, Fatso, and Bob. <laughs> Amazing. Are these are these like actual cats, or did you actually create them? And you you adopt the you adopt these cats. Oh wow, that's cool. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. This is awesome. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, the um. Privacy concerns. Yeah, definitely. This was like pre. Well, I don't know. It was weird because people were very concerned about using the web back then. But like, um, you know, I don't think anyone thought when they made a GeoCities page uh, that it was going to be the thing that that people saw 40 years from now or whatever. And uh, again, yeah, just I I've not gotten any complaints since they put on the robots no index or whatever. So yeah, I mean, there's ethical questions here. Obviously, it's a gray area. It's kind of like these are people's content from 40 years ago. But the thing is, if they tell you, hey, this is mine, take it down, how do you even prove that, right? Like, they, they don't have their email address anymore, right? Like, it's not, they're using an email address that doesn't exist. And like, so it's hard to even like kind of prove any of that. But it's also just like, why would a third party malicious actor actually want to take that site down? So you kind of just give them the, you know, I take, when people request the content gets removed, I, I block it. Like, I, I think that's, you know, pretty reasonable thing to do, you know, like, um, even if I can't prove it's actually their site or whatever, I mean, it probably is, and there's just no real harm to it, and usually their site sucks anyway, so it's like, whatever. <laughs> um, and I haven't tried to do any, like, machine learning classification or anything again, just like, there's, there's so much stuff, no one does any of this, like, there's so much stuff you can do here, that, like, no one's even, there's all this great new technology for, like, figuring out, like, whether stuff like this is good or not, and, like, we're just getting, you know, if someone could really get some stuff made here. I have a totally different question because it reminded me of all of the fun websites I used to visit on AOL in the 90s. Is any of that content still available? Yeah, AOL's there. Okay. Yeah, it's it's been archived and it's on the to-do list, let's just say. Like, it's no one's tried to do this. Again, everyone just stops at GeoCities. There's so many other things. There's Netscape pages, AOL members members.aol.com I think that was the name of it it was and it was usernames so there's like probably millions of sites there you know so that's another big one too and it's low hanging fruit I mean I'm not necessarily going to get any of this done you guys can if anyone wants to do a crazy project that's one of them I'll get you there I mean the one I'm looking for is CompuServe oh, does comp? anybody have the CompuServe forums downloaded 
Oh, and yeah, that's another that's another thing too. Um, not all of it is static HTML. Some of it's old forums and stuff, right? And uh, that sort of stuff, you know, MP3 archives. Those things kind of have custom needs, you know. Like making a forum archive might not be the same thing as restoring HTML, right? And so, like that's that's when it does become a little more complicated potentially. But yeah, it's like it's your thing, you know. You can you can do it. You can just kind of do it in a way you, that you think is interesting, and it, usually that means it's interesting for someone else too, you know. Yeah. Um, we at fifty here. We got more time or not really? It's uh, about five, five minutes is what we usually. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Thanks, guys.